How am I going to beat the last one? The last one I talked about, Docs. Hello, this is Universal Data Tool update number eight. First of all, it took a long time to get the second update out. The reason why it took so long is we did a major refactor. I want to give a shout out to Anna Plyon, uh, for fixing an issue in the audio transcription where the configuration you were putting on the interface page wasn't updating. Big thanks, Anna Plyon. Miguel Carval, Carvalho, 13. Thank you for fixing uh, the Portuguese translations. So if you look at the, he even put a before and after screenshot so you can see in the before, there were some invalid characters and after all those characters are fixed. Uh, thank you for doing that PR. This was our biggest update and why it took me so long to get a new weekly update out. We are introducing asynchronous data set loading. What this means is the universal data tool is gonna to be able to support even bigger data sets, data sets that go up to millions of samples. To do this, we had to make it so that the entire data set doesn't need to be loaded into memory if you're using an external server like the collaboration server. So now we've done that. If you're using the universal data tool as a React component, you might notice that some of the props on components like image classification or image segmentation have changed so that they don't need the entire data set loaded in. The next big change is we now have a dedicated doc page and an easier process for running on-premise installations. Before you would have to run the collaboration server separately. Now it's all run in a single Docker file. So basically, if you were to just run this line, you would have a functional universal data tool using a local collaboration server. You're also able to configure the universal data tool with environment variables now. Those environment variables will automatically be loaded into the, config, the app config of the universal data tool. So any settings you want your users to have, you can have that right away. One of them you might wanna change is the collaboration server URL, but you can also preload plugins and uh, uh, S3 configuration parameters, Cognito configuration parameters, and any other setting we come up with in the future. In version 14, you might notice some minor changes in the styling of the universal data tool. Instead of always showing the file name on top, it's now behind a small info menu. And when you enter a collaborative session, it'll, it'll have your share link right in that info menu. You might also notice in version 13, we introduced manage plugins. This is still a work in progress feature, but the basic concept is you'll be able to load in ES6 modules that add additional functionality to the universal data tool. Eventually we're going to have a search and discovery process for this, but for now uh, it's just kind of in there as a half-baked feature. Hopefully next week we'll have some updates that make this usable and allow people to start creating plugins. Because this change was so big, if you are using the universal data tool and you find any issues with version 14, be sure to let us know in an issue. There was so much code refactored that something might have slipped through. So let us know if you find anything. I also wanna thank all the people who discussed issues or uh, helped propose issues this week. Um, this one from Juan shows a new collaboration server architecture based on MongoDB. Um, and there's a lot of cool ideas in here. So thanks for opening this issue and thanks to everybody else who opened up or discussed issues with us on GitHub. If you're interested in getting started with development with the Universal Data Tool, we're going to have an eight hour hackathon where we'll walk people through all the basics of contributing and uh, get them started on October 29th. So if you want to RSVP, I'll leave a link in the description. Uh, be sure to join us. That's all for this week. Thanks.